welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. And I am honoured to be joined at Forbidden Planet TV by the marvellous Canadian author, H.M. Hannah Long. Hannah H.M. Long. How Hello. are you, mate? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm really well, thank you. It's great to see you. coming at us, And you're coming at us live from Ontario right now. Mm -hmm, I am. Hannah, is it pretty chilly there at the moment? Um, it's actually only minus a couple degrees right now, but we got like knee deep snow. So it's nice. <laughs> it's a nice kind of middle ground for winter. It's so funny because, <laughs> because you are indeed coming up, coming out as live from Canada for you. That's uh, oh yeah, it's quite mild. It's a few degrees below. There's, you know, the snow may be knee deep. Whereas that is a description of London today as we're recording this. And of course here uh -huh. it's a catastrophe. It's like, can you oh, believe no. how cold it is? You know, it's, yeah. it, it's, you know, it's minus two centigrade and the snow outside and everything grinds to a halt, you know, to me. And you guys yeah. are so well versed in dealing with all that. Yeah, we're, we're pretty well set up, but it's hard, especially in the inner city with lots of snow and stuff. And the oh, wind. Yeah. 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 Now that's pretty brutal. Yeah. That's pretty brutal. Yeah. I, I grew up in Liverpool, which is a port city in the north of England. Uh -huh. That has some really intense wind issues as well, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, so that, you know, the wind and the height of, of winter, that's something else. And and that yeah. all that theme kind of dovetails almost nicely with uh, the theme uh, of your novel that we're here to talk about, which is published by my colleagues at Titan mm -hmm. Books. And it is the wonderful Hall of Smoke. I have right here yeah right there that lovely the nice titan books cover, cover that with that that nice full stamp cover right there which uh -huh. um before we start talking you can <laughs> everybody watching this can order hall of smoke from forbiddenplanet.com from the links attached to this video right there <laughs> so hannah what can you tell me about the novel Okay, so Hall of Smoke is about Hesse, and Hesse is a warrior priestess of the goddess of war, and she's instructed by her goddess to kill a traveler coming through her village, and she doesn't do it. She decides not to, um, and so she's outcast from her people, and the book opens, we find her sitting on a mountainside praying for forgiveness and asking for a second chance to fulfill this vow that she made to kill the traveler, um, and while she's gone, her order is annihilated, and her village is destroyed, and she comes back down the mountain and basically discovers she has nothing left. Um, but as an outcast, she has no place in the high halls of the dead. So she will never see any of her loved ones again, unless she can regain her goddess's favor. So she goes off on an epic quest of redemption and revenge. There's meddling gods, there's roaming raiders, and there's magic and this ethereal higher realm. And it's got some good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and it, yeah, I, I, that that is an awesome description. Now, now, what? Where did where did the concept and the story for Hall of Smoke come from? Where did that universe come from? What were what were your inspirations? I was, I think, a lot of authors. I would say the same thing as a lot of authors, where it just kind of came together from a lot of different things over time. Um, I had a note file that I just kept throwing stuff into for this book that had this feeling like not a storyline not anything yet but it had a certain feeling a certain aesthetic to it um and I just kept piling things until one day a scene arrived and I it's the still the opening scene of the book and I just sat down and started writing and it just built from there and kind of unfolded and I mean I pulled in influences from where I live I live in like this forest with lots of rocks and lakes um stuff from traveling being in the Alps I lived in Germany for a few years and everything just kind of pulled together and produced this world and this book yeah <laughs> yeah that's uh, and, and of course something you just touched upon is that you're a great fan of, uh, of the natural world right you're, you're mm -hmm. you've got a big interest yeah. in in both hiking and history and it would seem to me that hall mm -hmm. of smoke one of the places it comes from is that confluence of interest right yeah very much yeah so so do you find um, that your experiences with hiking, say throughout the Alps and whatnot, have they created sort of potential vistas in your mind that you you reference while you're writing? Yeah, honestly, I straight wrote a lot of stuff right into the book. Yeah, so, <laughs> excellent. As well, good. during the, yeah, like during the period where I was writing Hall of Smoke, I was, I lived in this like attic apartment. It was horribly hot all day. 
I had, I was unemployed. My husband was out at work for 14 hours a day. So I was just alone in this apartment writing. And then on the weekends, we would go hiking. So each weekend I would come back with like this new, new places I'd seen and new things I'd done. And the only outlet I had was just writing again, because I had nothing else to do. So I would, I just wrote stuff in like places where we we slept at like little mountain cabins and things like that. It just went went in, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so why well, not? <laughs> hike, of course, of course. You got to you yeah. got to use what you know. And uh, if you're experiencing beauty, what better thing to uh, to place on the page, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so um, Hessa has uh, has a signature power, and uh, mm -hmm. I, what was what was the inspire which I find fascinating. Um, what was the inspiration for that power? I honestly don't know. <laughs> well, I was wondering if it was some kind of wish fulfillment, you know, where you've been in situations where you thought, man, you know, if only I could scream well, at this moment. It would be nice if, like, the power of my voice could actually, like, have, you know, the effect that I want, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, but I think with the Hess's power, it was just an instance of I was writing chapter two, no spoilers but there is a scene where she's in a confrontation and I just it just happened you know that I was just writing and she has her her war cry that shatters bones <laughs> so and it just happened and I was like oh that's cool we'll keep with that <laughs> well it, it's such a supremely evocative description uh, and that, that that's what I that's what I when I read it that's what I truly loved about it and, and mm -hmm. it's 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 not just that you're you know describing that power and what it does like say if you're reading a like a a, a, a reference book about the DC universe who's in the DC universe and you're leading a list a list mm -hmm. of people's powers the way you describe it is so supremely evocative thank you <laughs> oh, it really is yeah. yeah 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 and and can you give us a flavor of um without any spoilers of what, what the core of Hesse's journey throughout this novel is? Like her internal journey? Yeah, or, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, her internal journey is very much one of, she's coming from a very closed insular world with a very, very distinct and strict set of worldviews and beliefs. And the world runs by these set of rules. Humans do this and gods do this. And that's how things are, that's how it works. And as the story progresses, those rules are not being followed and things start falling apart. And Hessa starts to realize that the things that she's believed her whole life that she bases all her actions on and everything that she does, they might not be as firm as she thought they were. And there's something behind it. There's something more, there's something deeper going on. Um, so it's her journey coming to grips with the world as it truly is and her place in it and how she has to change um, and kind of rethink her life and her choices and her belief systems in accordance with that. So. Okay, yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So if, if, uh, if, if a reader who's watching this and um, um, picks up all the smoke and enjoys it, if, is there anything out, are there any other uh, novels or authors out there that have inspired you that you say, well, if you like my work, you might like to go and check this person who's meaningful to me out. If you had a miniature book club within the confines of this interview, is there anybody mm. that you would recommend, even if it's somebody that you've enjoyed that that's not in any way directly an influence upon you, but people you think if people like your work, they're going to like this other work that, that's meaningful to you. Um, I have a hard, I always have a hard time answering book questions because I have, so many books that I love and so many books that I feel have had an effect on me and my writing and a hall of smoke. Um, I would, I mean, when I was a teenager, Sabriel by Garth Nix was a huge influence yeah. on me. I think Sabriel's journey reflects Hess's a lot. Like this is more in the YA category, but yeah. I do feel like there's a lot of parallels between hall of smoke and that book. Um, I mean, I loved Cersei. I mean, I don't even really have to qualify Cersei much, but that that etherealness and stuff that is also a little bit with ha some sections of Hall of Smoke. Um, there's a lot of rapid action. Um, I'm having trouble pulling up a title, but I'll keep thinking on that. Um, it would relate to that. But um, I mean, Neil Gaiman's Norse mythology, I loved. Oh and yeah, actually, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. I've got this one here. 
this is a Norse mythology inspired book that's actually coming out tomorrow as a recorded day. Wonderful. And Titan is publishing the UK edition of this. Yeah, as well. yeah, we are indeed. Yeah. yeah. And it's all yeah. it's that's good stuff. Oh, that's that, and it's very magnanimous of you to hold it up on the of uh, the camera as well. I am uh, such a supporter of this book. <laughs> <laughs> I love this book. <laughs> okay, I'm done. So, so uh, yeah, no, yeah, it, it's interesting. Be, it's interesting to be name check because uh, both Garth and Neil, or you know, Mister Nix and Mister mm -hmm. Gaiman, have been on the show as well in recent times. Oh, really? You know? wow. Yeah, yeah. So you're in great company, mate. You know, <laughs> in very good company. Um, yeah. And and I, I know that. Uh, Hester is a character that you're continuing with, um, mm -hmm. and that you have more adventures, more adventures for her within the universe that you created. Uh, yes. and I know it's not out for some time, but what can you tell me about your next novel? So Hollow Smoke has a standalone sequel. So it's a complete whole story set in the same world as Hollow Smoke, um, called Temple of No God, which is coming early 2022. Um, it is, it takes place 10 years after Hall of Smoke. Uh, Hesse is also the main character and there's some other familiar faces as well. But this book takes place predominantly in the Arpa Empire, which is south of the wall for anyone who's read uh, Hall of Smoke. Um, and it's very much like this crumbling empire, this gruntled fallen gods and yeah. There's some good stuff going on. <laughs> I, can't, I, I absolutely can't wait. I can't wait to see that book. Uh, uh, sitting there side by side, all the smoke on the shelf. That would be awesome. Oh, yeah. uh, and beyond that point, <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you have any uh, have any further plans? Uh, uh, any further plans for Hessa? I have plans. I don't know if I'll be able to go through with those plans, but I have... Um, I have multiple more ideas set in the same world with... Uh, characters connected to Hesse that I would love to see go somewhere someday. Um, there's so much potential with the world of Hall of Smoke. I think, I think the world is one of Hall of Smoke's greatest qualities. And I really, I love all the possibilities that the mythology and the cultures and the legends and all these little stories um, could produce in the future. So. I can't wait, mate. I can't wait. I'm sure you'll get the chance to tell those stories as well. And, uh, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I know you will. Uh, and on that note, um, this has been Forbidden Planet TV. And I've been honoured to be joined by Hannah Long, H.M. Long, talking about her new novel out now from Titan Books and available from the links attached to this video. Hall of Smoke, right there. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me yeah. today, mate. Thank you so much, Andrew. This was great. It was great really to see you. you. Uh, me too. Me too. It was awesome. Take care and all the best. <laughs> Take care. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.